All right, welcome to the podcast. Today, we're going to do something a little different. So we've had guests on the last few weeks, and we're going to continue to do that a little more often. Uh, this is a format today that I want to actually start running on a very regular basis, and it really depends on you guys, the listeners, sending us questions. So today is going to be a little bit of a Q&A format. These questions are going to be asking us like what our favorite thing, like workouts and some different things are. That's not necessarily what we want from you guys. What we want from you guys is maybe to ask a question that we can maybe help solve a problem. I think that would be a little more along the lines. Today's going to be fun. We're going to kind of open it up and just answer some fun questions just amongst ourselves. I'm going to ask a question to these guys. I'm actually going to just go ahead and answer it myself first, and then I'll, I'll give it up to each one of these guys, and we'll, we'll kind of go through a few. And I think Kate had one there at the end, too, that she wanted to kind of throw in. Um, I think the first one that I wanted to ask was, what are your top three things? Actually, you guys answer first. I'll, I'll kind of come in at the end. Your top three things that derail your fitness or just healthy habits in general. Um, we can start with Dave here. Got to be the wife, first of all. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if, you, if you know Chelsea, that's why that's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, part of that could be in relationships. It could be like in the stress bucket. So yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. Being funny, but I mean, there is something to that. Um, so I said, um, so different categories, <clears throat> injuries, aches, pains, things like yep. that. Um, stress, those could be different areas of life, work, relationships, you know, whatever you name it. Um, and then just kind of general, like, Sleep and fatigue. Yeah. So some of these kind of overlap, but if I'm just like, you know, maybe it's been a tough week or some times where I'm just having trouble sleeping or falling asleep or not getting enough, that really makes doing activities a lot tougher. You know what I mean? 100%. Um, getting motivated to do them. Like usually I'm pretty good once I'm in a workout, like being in the moment and doing pretty well. Sometimes it's really hard to kind of get going yeah. or to find the motivation or just – you know, if you're really trying to test something or push something weight wise or something more intense, it's just really hard to get there. If you're just kind of like, oh, I just don't feel 100 percent right now. Mm -hmm. It's kind of I feel slow, kind of a little fatigued. Um, yeah. So I, I would say those are kind of the top three for me, at least, um, you know, working around injuries, you know, aches, pains, things like that. And usually that's not bad. You can kind of work around it, find a way to fight through. But they're just these things are. I feel like there's always one of these going on, though. That's the hard oh, part. Yeah. It's like there's yeah. always something. Nothing's generally ever perfect, but you're just always kind of managing something a little bit. But generally, yeah, I would say things sleep-related, being tired, fatigued, kind of stress-related stuff, which can also make you more tired. I mean, like I said, there's some overlap here, but I would say those three for yeah. me personally, yeah. How about you? Um, So I'd say probably mine – since I've had kids, I feel like it's changed a little. Um, I'm just not willing to like shut down my life for that long anymore. Like, and I think maybe that's just like, uh, the, the amount of time that I feel like I've, uh, in my life that I've kind of shut down every, and when I mean shut down, like you're not going out to eat or we're not really having alcohol or we're, we're doing this, we're going to bed at 9 PM on the weekend. I'm just really starting to kind of like that gets old. <laughs> so not doing all the extra things that, that help your yeah, fitness so during, like I'll, make your workouts. Like work even like, I really yeah. would like to do the open this year and do well, but yeah. I'm only willing to do so much. And sure. I don't know that I think kids are just a layer. I don't, they really, you know, our kids are pretty good and, and, for the most part, like they're just whatever, not, not too much. I mean, we can get some help and that sort of thing, but I'm just kind of like, you know, I don't really feel like forcing anything anymore. And I feel like I used to do a lot of forcing. We're like, I don't yeah. give a shit. This is what you're doing. This is what you're eating. You're going to bed. I don't care. And, and I do that, you know, week in, week out, month in, month out. And I just, I just don't, I don't have it in me right now during this phase. I don't know if Again, it's the kids and they're young and I'm tired or this is just where I'm at because I've, I've kind of like done various things or I've pushed myself for periods of years that I just kind of feel like I don't like my life to feel out, out of balance. Yep. 
So I think, I think, I guess that's it more now. Like whenever I feel anything out of balance, I want to get back to balance and I'll let it go there. Like at the end of nap, I sure as shit wasn't feeling it. <laughs> like, I'm like, I need to eat lots of vegetables sure, and, yeah. and not have any alcohol. And, and, you know, but I like to find that balance you know, not let it go on for too long, like maybe like a period of like a week or something. But I just I don't like that duration of feeling out of balance. Um, and I think there's a period where, you know, if you're really going to be like working towards a high end fitness school, you're going to feel a little out of balance yep. where like, hey, I, I'm going to whether it's pushing when you don't want to push um, it's, uh, you know, eating chicken and vegetables when you really kind of just might feel like a pizza or you see other people out doing things. You're like, man, I really don't want to be on my couch. I just don't, I'm really trying to like live more in the moment and be spontaneous. It's hard for me because I'm a kind of controlled like person, but I think it, um, that's, those are conflicting goals to be like, intuitive and live in the moment and then be very structured and like, Hey, I have this goal that I want to work towards in three months. Cause it's not yeah. really like being intuitive how you're going to feel in three months. Yeah. You might just feel like working hard now. So, um, I mean, I know I'm going in on that, but I really feel like probably hit on a couple of different points there, but really just, um, kind of like fleeting moments of like, that would be really fun to be able to do this, but then I don't really want to put in the work to do it. And, that's just kind of where I'm at. I'm willing to try mm -hmm. about, I would say I give myself about a six, six and a half. That's where I'm at right now. Well, just like pushing, you know, like mm -hmm. I'll always come in and work out every day, but how hard I push, if I push when I'm tired, I would say for you, that's probably as it stands today. And then you always will. I usually rise to occasion. Yeah, well, you, you'll, <laughs> you'll usually like that, that lasts for like a couple months and then you'll, you'll get like really focused on you'll find something that you usually want to do um do you have so just generally like not giving up um certain fun things and pleasures and stuff like that yeah. to, to push towards fitness do you have anything like more specific well, yeah like so we don't have to have like a, a list right. of three exactly i mean um, i but, guess i mean with me i think it's always the balance of fun and discipline yep so i want to have a fun social life cultivate relationships and then i i will have discipline throughout the week but i i really don't want to give up my weekend much sure um i'm willing to give up like one day a week for a while but not usually that saturday night it's yeah. hairs down yeah I, I, on. I would <clears throat> Well, I, I would just say for me, it's it's pretty much identical to what Dave said. Um, you know, sleep, injuries, um, stress. Uh, I, I to get like a little more granular and specific though. Like <clears throat> one thing that whenever I want to really dial my fitness in, it's a very simple thing for me with with nutrition. Is just not eating after dinner. That makes all the, like, if I have like a specific thing I'm getting ready for, like uh, an event, uh, we're doing the pump and run or, or whatever it is, or we're going on a trip or anything like that we, that we want, I want to get really dialed in and, and lean. I just don't eat food after dinner. And after a month, it's night and day different. And we eat dinner at five. Yeah. So I think that makes a big difference too. Soft tissue injuries for me just take forever now to, to get better and, and some can nag for months. So if I can keep myself healthy and, and most of mine come from overuse, it's not like acute. It's just like something will start to hurt and I'll kind of grind through it for a while. And then, then all of a sudden I'm like, oh shoot, it's kind of gone past this tipping point. So just continuing <coughs> to be mindful of, of that and be smart with, with my training and find that kind of Goldilocks zone of like, staying in the middle because I'll get greedy. Like I'll start to feel good and I'm like, okay, now it's time to get going. Now it's time for the durability test. And that's yeah. like when I, I usually um, end up tweaking myself. So nice and steady is, is kind of the, uh, the, you know, the way for me. And, and if I do make fitness gains, it should be over a period of time and just adding a little more instead of being like, hey, I'm feeling really good. I'm going to really get after it next week. So it's just, I'm going to add maybe one more little workout or just one day a week after class, I'm going to do like some extra credit 
and just trickle that in instead of now every day I'm doing an extra workout. Um, and then sleep for me is by far, I think, the biggest one. When I'm sleeping good, everything comes together. When I'm not, um, all of those other aspects, the soft tissue injuries come. Um, I have a real lack of discipline with nutrition because I'm tired and I think I'm trying to eat to just try and keep my shit together and, and go. Mm -hmm. So when I'm sleeping, everything works way better. My pain levels down, everything is way better. That is the, for me, the like most easier said than done thing in the world though. Um, yeah, just sleep better. So I yeah. think I've, I've been lucky person. I think that it's, it's health and, fitness have always been such a mainstay in my life and I've done it so long consistently that I feel like even if there's some things that kind of maybe like you were saying, Kate, kind of derail your, your motivation, your intensity that you're going for it. It's just, I know that like it always makes me feel better. So mm -hmm. I'll find some way to keep moving. Even yeah. if it's like lower intensity or just doing yard work or mowing the lawn or going for a walk. I like, I just know that like my body likes to move. And as long as I keep moving, like the things that are attempting to derail it, if I keep moving, they're going to kind of help, you know, heal those things a little bit more. You know what yeah, I mean? So if absolutely. I just stop working out or stop training or stop doing any kind of fitness or those things that make my body and mind healthy, like they're going to make all those other contributing factors worse. So I just kind of have to know that like that just you've always done this, just keep moving. And, you know, like it, it's just a matter sometimes of how hard you want to do it. Right. And it's sometimes right. it's a couple of days. You just go through a little bit of funk and that's kind of when I'll just modify things or maybe just take a couple of days off from working at the gym. Maybe your body just needs a rest. I mean, just the longer you do it, the more it's become a habit or a routine. You kind of learn to kind of feel what your body needs a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. And so I've found that like I, it definitely, if, if other things are trying to take away from my drive to maybe push it in some physical aspect, I'll at least do a little bit less intense stuff because I know it just feels good. And I just give myself a break for a few days or whatever time needs. And then when you're, when it feels right, you'll get back into it. So yeah. No, I feel like great. I'm yeah. pretty similar in that same way. Like I'll always, I'll always work out. I don't really ever have a fear. Like I'm just going to stop because it just, it does make me feel good, but I might, you know, what, what I might do in a week, if I don't feel well, or I'm really stressed out. It's just like, not much in here, you yeah. know, but I always know I'll work out. Um, I just think some, you know, sometimes like if you're a motivated person, at, at least I've forced things so much in the past. I'm just tired of kind of forcing, you know? Yeah. So it, even if I'm like thinking, Oh, that could be fun. And if I'm getting into it, I'm like, this feels forced. I just, I'm going to let it go. Like, I don't, I don't care, <laughs> yeah. you know, whether, whatever that is. And, and even like in a workout, man, if this feels like it's going to injure me, so what? It's one workout. Like it's yep. not, it's not forever. And I, if I usually like take more of that approach, I feel like whatever I'm working towards, I end up a little bit further ahead than if I force. Cause I think forcing was okay. You know, in your twenties, in your thirties, even late thirties, your body starts to be like, Hey, screw you. Like, it, we're not doing this anymore. Yeah. And then in your forties, it's like, okay, now you're injured because you didn't listen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel good. I just kind of had this thought where it's just funny that it's kind of uh, evil that like the things that sometimes, you know, take you off track from a, a nice, healthy lifestyle and training. Um, they kind of tell you, Hey, maybe you should just sit around and do nothing. Hey, like have some mess up. <laughs> but like, but you know that like usually, when you do, you know, some physical activity, when you get things back on track or have a nice little workout, you know, for, for what's needed at that time, you're like, man, I feel so much better now. But all those things are telling you not to do it. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So you're like, oh, which one do I listen to? Which voice do I listen to right now? Because I definitely get to those points where sometimes maybe a day or two, I'm like, oh, I just don't want to do anything. It's like jumping in a cold pool. Yeah. You're it's like, like, I don't want to do this. But then you do it and you're like, wow, I feel like a different person. Yep. Oh, this is like your your whole mood is it's, it, it really is just a it's like an evil trick that yeah. like your brain and your body do to you that you know it's but I think the more experience you have with that to you know don't force something that doesn't feel right but do something that is good for you and productive and you're like oh I feel a little bit better maybe feel way better yeah. yeah yeah maybe I should learn yeah. from this so okay so yeah. the the next question I have is um, what is now, we all have multiple ones, and we probably have different ones at different training stages 
mine definitely is like my all time favorite one, but one that I wouldn't be my all time favorite one today. Um, what is your favorite CrossFit workout and why? And Dave, you can start. We'll just lead you off each time. Okay. I'm not very good at making. I could have like a top ten of something yeah. on top. I'm not good at like finding like. You could just pick yeah, one of your yeah. top five. Like, well, yeah. this would be one. Yeah. He wants to say all ten. <laughs> no, I didn't have ten. It was more like five. I'm gonna I'm gonna do one hero and one girl. Perfect. Is that cool? Yep. Is that allowed? All right. So. I hear a workout we used to do a lot. I've done it many times in different kind of like iterations of it. Same format, but I would use different movements sometimes with uh, classes. Uh, it was a lumberjack 20. Great one. Yeah. So basically it's what's that? basically like seven rounds. I could go through it. Yep. You got 20 reps of a bunch of movements. There's some uh, deadlift, like a heavy deadlift Opens in there. Opens with like a deadlift, yeah. Yeah. Opens up with a deadlift. So you always have 20 reps of a movement and then a four meter run. And I think there are, there's seven runs in total, I think. Yeah, I know I you have, have some right overhead here. squats, yeah. you've got pull-ups, yeah, some heavy kettlebell swings, burpees. Yeah, yep. Heavy kettlebell swings, burpees, uh, there's some box jumps in there. But, but yeah, there's like seven movements, 20 reps each, and some are pretty heavy, you know, for, for a workout anyway. Like the deadlift, deadlift for guys yeah. is 275. Yeah. 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 So open it up with 20, let's go. And then you got a four-meter yeah. run. So it's just, I like workouts that you could be like, hey, I – I want to hit a little bit of everything today. I got, you know, 20, 25 minutes to get a little bit of conditioning in. I want to hit some different body parts, and it's just like a good total body workout. Yep. Um, we used to do that one a lot on Sundays for hero workouts. Yeah. So I just, I really like that one a lot. Um, that one touches everything yeah, very awesome. well. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a well-rounded workout. I mean, I think sometimes you'll look at some of the hero workouts, and you're like, oh, that's really aggressive or that's like a lot of one thing or one body part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's one of the, like, they're not, sometimes that it's not always the most practical workout. Um, even though it is like a, a tribute workout type situation. Uh, but that one I think is just a really well-rounded workout. Um, sometimes people would gripe and be like, Oh, there's, that's a lot of running. Uh -huh. It's like, well, it's Sunday. You showed up for the year workout. So that's what you're going to do. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's winter. It's 20 degrees out. Just wear some sweatpants. <laughs> yep. You'll be warm in round two. No, that's a great workout. Yeah. I, I, I I like that one. What's yeah. your What's your girl? The girl, uh, Helen. Yep. Those so are you got... like, seriously, my friend. That's a, those are my two. Yeah. <laughs> that's um, so funny. You know, it's like kind of a medium length workout. Like, what, you got like maybe seven to 15 minutes kind of in that range. Medium depending short. On, yep, yeah. Yep. Depending on, on your capabilities. But you got three rounds for time, 400 meter run. 21 kettlebell swings at 53 and 35, and then 12 pull-ups. So if – it's not a ton of volume, but if you can do those movements well, it I mean, a lot of people, once they get, you know, pretty good at CrossFit, doing 12 pull-ups and 21 swings in a row is not hard. It's all the run. Oh, yeah. Yes. It hurts so <laughs> bad. You'll go on, hit that first run, come back in, get your swings, get your pull-ups. That's That second run coming out the door, it's like, <gasps> like you just don't know what happened to you. But it's a pretty safe workout. I guess that's not too long. It's a nice, good sprintish type of workout. It does challenge the grip a little bit. Um, kind of coming into that last round with your swings and pull ups, you do have to hold on. Those twelve pull ups at, at the, the end. on that third round are everything you got, even when you're good at it. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like Jackie, where you're just finishing up those pull ups. You're like, I just <laughs> the bar slipping a little bit yep. further. You're still trying to do pull ups. Jackie was in the running too, but I did Helen. Yeah, yeah. So I'll go with that one. I do. What's like that Jackie one. again? I forget names. One K row, yeah. uh, fifty oh, yes, thrusters yes. with the empty I'll bar, thirty too. pull ups. Yeah, great workout. You used yeah. to do that a lot one back in the day. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Yep, that's Gosh, a great We haven't one. done Jackie in a while. We haven't. Ed, that just came back you on might my radar. See yeah, yeah. Jackie that's, next week. You're gonna see Jackie soon. A lot that of these ones one. too, especially some of the some of the the girl ones are like you know, it's, depending yeah. on the format, they're really good to kind of break apart as intervals. So like you could do Jackie in like three rounds, just divide it in half and like. You know, do a 500, do 20 thrusters, maybe 10 pull-ups, rest three minutes. You could yeah. you could train that workout in different pieces and get kind of creative with it and yep. not just, you know, as a way to kind of test the workout um, or train for the do workout. Do like a weekly workout, maybe yeah. a week or two before it during mm -hmm. the week and in intervals and then Saturday, yeah. hey, we're going to hit it. It's mm -hmm. a great way to like yeah. kind of prep people's body yeah. for. Yeah, prep, yeah. you know, yeah. prep for a workout, divide into intervals, do some training like that, just so you get a, like a, a shorter sprint out of it, a little bit of rest. So 
a lot of those kind of classic uh, benchmark girl workouts were always nice to do in pieces as, as a kind of training tool to improve them a little yep. bit. I always like doing that. Or if you just want to make it a longer training session with a class, like, hey, I want to I want to do a workout. I like this type of workout, this format, but I, I want to have something longer than like a 10 or 8-minute workout today. Let's Can we make this a little bit longer, throw in some rest in there, and get some more volume for the day? I'd like eight different Fran variations where I do that, where I do like a 15, 12, 9, a three minute rest, and then like a 12, 9, 6, three minute rest, then a 9, 6, 3. But what I'll do with the, I'll sometimes vary the the hanging movement. I'll have it be like pull ups, toes to bar, chest to bar. And then with the, um, the barbell move, I might go uh, front squat at 95, push press at 115 thruster at 135 for the 963. So I'll I'll do that and then put rest in between it. But it'll it'll spread that workout out. So we're we're not putting a three to you know eight minute workout into an hour class and like okay we're gonna do another you know practice round and so it, it helps that workout kind of spread out. You get some more volume in practice. So to your point. That is yeah. one of my favorite ways I like to spread that workout out. Yeah, um, programming stuff, I got just like, why reinvent the wheel? If you just like, you can kind of find a bunch of benchmarks and like, how can I manipulate this and do a good, not as a test workout, but how do I use this as like a training protocol for the day? Yeah. Like so it, it'll, it just kind of, it, it's just a tiny framework to give you ideas, like a head start and ideas rather than just trying to come up with something in your head. Yep. So I would often just kind of go to some of those pages and just kind of peruse around, just look for ideas of, of ways to kind of come up with stuff and then make it my own way or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. Kate, so he kind of got your, yeah, your, your you know, because we were talking yeah. about this yeah, last no, she night. Was like, she was like, exactly. lumberjack, well, she's like lumberjack 20 and Helen. So well, I can go through lumber. I have, I have it right here. If you guys want to hear the whole thing. So it's 20 deadlifts, 275, 185, 400 meter run, 20 kettlebell swings. Um, I forget. Just what, just list yeah. the moves because um, we know it's a 400, 400 yeah. after each one. So 400 meter run after each thing, 20 overhead squats, 20 burpees, 20 chest bar pull-ups, 20 box jumps, 20 dumbbell squat cleans. Yeah, that the 20 dumbbell squat cleans at the end. end is the worst part of the workout for sure. Yeah. It's <laughs> awkward and your back's kind of lit up. Yeah, and for me it was yeah, always yeah, yeah. chest bar pull-ups. Yeah, that's, that's a tough... I used to be really good at overhead squats. I don't know what happened. So that is a spot know. in the workout. If you have not been doing overhead squats and it's like a real sticky move for you. I'm kind of heavy. I mean, not yeah, that heavy, but the heavy for that point of the it's workout. It's not enough. 75, 55. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah you, you want to modify it to your yeah. abilities, but yeah, as, as RX, was it 115 and 75? 75, yeah. Uh-huh. 115 when you're... Tired. tired. It's it's for twenty reps. Is the shoulders start to go a little it's not, bit? Yeah. It's not fun. Um, yeah. That was the part. So I was telling them before we we did the podcast that um, I watched our level one seminar staff, which was made up of mainly games competitors back in two thousand nine at the time. They all took that workout on, and the overhead squats is where a couple of them like went bad on them like you could just tell they didn't do them a lot like yeah. a couple people they're kind of holding the bar up or the bar's about to touch the the top of their head with bent elbow yeah. kind of a deal um yeah so that was the uh the tough part um mine is mine is a different workout it is a hero workout called daniel and it's a four-time one it's 50 pull-ups, a 400-meter run, 21 thrusters at 95-65, an 800-meter run, 21 thrusters again, a 400-meter run, and then ends with 50 pull-ups. I would not have said – you would not have thought you would have said that. <laughs> I love this workout because when I am at my, like, peak fitness and very fit, running with a barbell, my body weight stuff's on point, I – I've, uh, the, the reason why is I don't think, um, there's a workout that I've ever seen where I can pack that much dense density of work into, I've done it under 16 minutes. So in, you know, how much running is that? How, what's the total? So it's a, it's a mile and a 400. Okay. Or wait, no, it's, it's a it, mile. No, it's, it's a mile of running. It's an 800 to 400. Okay. So you've got 42 thrusters, a hundred pull-ups and a mile of running packed into, you know, for me, I think I've done it in 
you know, 15, 30 range, maybe 16 minutes, somewhere and in it's that 21 range. 21 thrusters at a time. Mm -hmm. And what's the loading? Is it 95, 95 65? Yeah. But you've got to, you've got some good runs between it to break it up. So all the work. So for me, when I've done it, when I'm, I'm really fit, I have not one setted the pull-ups. I've gotten about 45, 46 a couple of times when I started the workout, a quick drop. And then I just, I just hit them and then I'm off to the races. The, the thrusters are all unbroken. And then the last set of pull-ups, by the time I get back to them, I can hit another set of 20 and then I'm kind of chipping away at the end. But by the time I get done with it again, it's like 15 and a half minute workout. I'm looking at the clock. I'm like, I just got so much work done. My body is just like smoked. And, you know, you've got a barbell element where you're moving through this huge range of motion, the pull-ups of, again, you're moving your body through this huge range of motion for tons of reps. You've got pull and push too. And a mile nice, of, yeah. a mile of, of hard running in there. And it's so much work in this like tiny amount of time comparatively to how much you're getting in. Um, that, that just like when I've done that and felt good, every time I finish that workout really effectively and well, I'm like, man, that's, I, I just hit everything. I didn't maybe get a hinge movement in, but I like really lit my whole body up and uh, got a ton of work done in a dense period of time. So um, we haven't done that one in about a year. So well, before it gets cold, next, maybe it'll come next in. Next two hero wads are going to be. Yeah, I don't know. No, <laughs> they're not. They're not right now. Where what I have planned, but um, that's right. You were working on that last night. Yep. But yeah, so that was uh, that's my favorite workout again right now um probably would not do well on it like that but uh when i'm feeling great that's that's my my go-to one um honorable mention for me i'm gonna go with badger and winton i like those two I have as no well. idea what those are the badger is a, a run squat clean pull up yep, 30, workout yeah three rounds that's a grind what's the yeah. run that's a grind. Meters. 800? Yeah, 30 pull-ups, 30 squat cleans. At 95, 65, yeah. Have I done that? We, yep, yep, you've done You're actually really good at that. Brandon you will can, tell me what my times are. <laughs> she, she runs real well off, like, a leg burn. So, like, she just yeah. she knocks through those squat cleans super I think that's, well. That's when you know you're in pretty good crossfit shape is when you can handle a ton of squatting or jumping or lunging and still, and still run pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. When you don't do that for a while, it's like... See, this podcast is getting me fired up to... I want to push real hard. <laughs> that that we workout. Do a live, live workout. Oh, a, a yeah. A live podcast workout where we'll we do talk this. During the <laughs> Kid, how's it going mid workout? Cuss words like, only. Let's go, let's go good. Fuck off. <laughs> so I, I know one of your other questions, though, was um, that you wanted to throw in here that I'll ask uh, pre workout fuel. What do you like to eat? Is there anything specific like a go to for you guys? You want to go? I honestly, I mean, as long I don't like to be, I mean, like most people, I, you don't want to be like really full before you work out, yep. you know what I mean? So I just, if, you know, a moderately empty stomach is nice. I've just never really gotten into like pre-workouts that much. I, I mean, people ask me about that sometimes just in conversation. I mean, I could probably count in my hand the amount of times I pre take a pre-workout in a year. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I just never, I just never wanted to get into it too much or just rely upon it. I mean, I think as long as things are generally going well and I've, I'm well rested enough. And I try to have like maybe some fruit before like an apple or a banana, something like that. I can eat that 10 minutes before work. I have a banana or apple and be totally fine. Yep. Yeah. But you don't um, have like a thing that you do no, every no. time. I mean, I would say if it's like if something's on the line or it's a competition, like when, when it's more, when the stakes are higher, you're probably more concerned about yeah. like, how do I really fuel this? But for the average day, it's just like, let's just go. Let's get yeah. up and go. As long as if I'm working out in the morning, just make sure I have like, Sometimes early in the morning, if I'm doing some classes, I won't really have anything in the morning. I'll have coffee or something to drink. But if I'm going to work out in the morning, you know, I'll at least have a little bit of get some carbs in me, a little bit. Have something in my stomach just because I'll be, you know, running on empty. Yeah, but, some people uh, do like the 5:30 a.m. fasted. I don't. I couldn't. I can't train like that. If it's that I'd early, say I probably most could. People, yeah. Most people yeah. do. Yeah. I mean, that's a big battle I have with people because I always make them eat. Now I used to do the whole fasted cardio, and there's all, you know, you can get your body used to anything, but I think. Like if you can ideally wake up and get something in you, you're going to have a little more pop, mm -hmm. you know, and then just like on a purely like fueling standpoint, to me, it makes more sense to have like 
the majority of your your consumption be around your the majority of your movement. So, so Kate, for you, do you is your go to like I like to call it? It's what all like uh, kind of female CrossFitters I always see in here. Absolutely Googles. on this one. It's just like it's just here. like a, a <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> Like a Tupperware of a goo, and it's usually some sort of yogurt protein powder. Like, I, I don't eat that, but it's something that I see girls eating all the time. Maybe some fruits mixed in there, but... Well, um, you know, what do I eat every a, single parfait. morning? A goo. No, what do I eat every single morning? It's like one of two things. You sit beside me. Every, like a yogurt every, and some, like... Um, in the morning. First, first thing in the morning, what do I eat every day? A yogurt... You sit beside me. <laughs> you literally don't know. <laughs> and some like uh, granola crunched up on too. Oh my god! I eggs, eat oatmeal, oatmeal or eggs. cream of rice every day. Okay. For like the last like ten with some years. eggs sometimes. Good job. Yep. <laughs> do you do You're like right. the eggs and the oatmeal? Do you put like egg whites into? I'll, I mean, I'll do. I'll do that sometimes. I know just, it is. It is I mean, a little because, yucky. I, mean, it tastes, I don't like that. Egg whites taste like the nothing. Texture. You can you can put it in texture, anything, but yeah. yeah. I mean, I've seen Chelsea do like egg whites and oatmeal. I kind of like, like the some, egg whites that's some on bodybuilder top. Shit right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got I got real used. To, I mean, every single day. I love like hot syrup. I hate a cold breakfast. I'll do yogurt in the afternoons, but yeah, it's okay. So my favorite all time pre workout fuel was actually a product called three fuel that we sold at the gym oh, yes. that the uh, yeah. CrossFit endurance dudes came up with. Uh, I think it was Brian McKenzie and uh, Doug Katona. And it was a, uh, um, like a race fuel. I think they tried to make for like triathletes, but it was protein based, but it had like fat and carbs in it. And a it little was, bit, not ton, like no. four, five grams. But, but it yeah. wasn't. It wasn't like just a protein powder. No, it was no, like it was good. It was like a, a percentage. It was like I don't know, like it was more like a 40, 30, 30 or maybe a mm-hmm. fifty mm-hmm. percent protein. Probably 40, 30, 30. But it had some 40, carbs. Yeah. It had some fat in it, yeah. and and it was a real light. Like it didn't. Like I, I wouldn't want to drink like a, a just a pure fifty grams of whey protein and then go try and like run around like that's this stuff was awesome to to train did they go on. out of business they did yeah I was gonna say, we so should get we, that back in and forget about no things. we sold it and then i just remember um trying to reorder it you know people would actually because they had like a cult following and no one sold it so we would actually have people drive from like 45 minutes away every once in a while and get a bag and then all of a sudden they slowly like weren't getting stock in and i've never seen a comparable product to yeah it. no that was really good i'm not going to reminisce about old workout supplements that well, don't just, exist hold on anymore for but, one yeah. second though do you guys well i know you didn't take pre-workouts but i used to take um shoot i don't take anything i haven't in years but what was um what was that the, the product fuel? no hydroxy it, cut no no no. I was gonna say hydroxy and cut. no it was more like crossfit era it was uh muscle farm made it i think and it was like a pre-workout. Oh, it muscle farms like one? Tingling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Com- or not, combat was their protein powder. Yeah. It was a salt. Yes. A salt. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That'll yes. last for the past. Everybody yeah. took that. Yeah. yeah. I remember taking a salt. Shout out to Corey G on that one. He, yeah, he, he just he had a lot of nice in there. Yeah. I really love that. But I remember taking it a couple of times and I, I like, like mistaked it for um, glutamine. And so I took like, you know, double a salt. And it would, your whole, like, your arms would tingle. You'd feel, like, out of your mind, like, Mm -hmm. you know, like you'd taken a drug. Well, I was going more with, like, a pre-workout. No, I know what you mean, but I would just assault, yes, yes. But I don't do pre, I mean, coffee, but. I'll do it before that Saturday. I I got some, like, free pre-workout. It's actually good. I I don't like to do it with any kind of high heart rate stuff. But I got some, and um, I'll do, I like to do Saturday power hours. At least, like. You know, fairly often, depending on where my week is, it's a good way to just get going Saturday and, and do something if I don't want to smash a hero workout. Um, but I'll do pre-workout before that because you're just pumping up. It's mm-hmm. it's perfect for that. But if I'm doing like yeah. a hard CrossFit workout, no way. It really depends yeah. on yeah what you're doing for training the day. Yeah. Like you're doing a CrossFit workout, or are you just lifting? Or are you doing like a longer endurance? Yeah. Like or just you know something like I I, I can generally. 
get through an hour of training, like a strength session and a workout, I could do that fast. It's not really that much of a, yeah. a taxing on my system. Is it going to be optimal if like this was like a, a competition? No, I would probably feel a little bit better for that, but just on the average day, no. But I have like gone out for, let's say like a seven, eight mile, like a longer run. And if you don't have enough in your system, like I just, that was a different feeling for me as, as someone who, you know, the first time I think I did like a half marathon a couple of years ago, just getting into that training stuff. I just wasn't used to like, part of that sport is really, it's the constant feeling of the body, right? If you have a long race or a long event, it's like, yeah, there's a reason why people take goose or certain things like that, because you literally, I just never had that feel. I was so used to being, having to stop a workout because I was either out of breath or like my muscles were fatigued. But that feeling of like just being on a long run and you're like, my battery's running low. I'm famished like, here. <laughs> like, no, you just, yeah. you just feel like the energy, yeah. I guess the only I know analogy like is your, your body. Yeah, yeah. Like you're just like, I'm, I just feel kind of like shaky. Like things aren't working right because like you're just running out of fuel. You yep. need like you need some calories. When I get home, I'm gonna crush some food because I'm so hungry right now. Yeah, there's that kind of weird like need for it that you just feel sometimes. If you're in a ten mile run, you're eight miles in, you're like, oh, I did not eat enough. Yeah, and if you're used to doing, you know, sports like football, it's like a four second play. You know, you're just used, used to doing power sports or yep. things that don't last beyond an hour. But is coming from that background and having to do some things that went over an hour constant aerobic movement i was like oh this is like a different approach like part of the sport and doing things like this is being able to it's like a nutritional approach yeah it's, it's have, like yeah. part of the training is like how do i fuel my body to last that long you can't yeah. just like go mm-hmm. yep eventually you're going to need something to kind of refuel on the way you can't just go three hours two hours straight without having anything you know so that's kind of part of the learning process too i, I would say just as far as getting into some of those longer events yeah you know? mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm just like you. Fruit is my go-to for for pre like I like to eat. Some yeah, it just it doesn't fill me up. It digests yep. easily. You get some fast acting carbs, and you're like, that, that's pretty good. Yeah. La- last thing, um, what is your optimal? We'll call it just like your fighting weight when you are. Uh, it's you know when you're about to compete in something. What is like the optimal body weight? For you, like when you're about to do, like say a race or a CrossFit competition, or how what it has been, and it evolves through the years too. It gets heavier usually as you get a little older. Um, I even know that from from not from me personally boxing, but from following the sport. Whenever old athletes try and come down in weight, always bet on the other guy if, if we have any sports gamblers here, because when that old guy drops weight. Nine times out of ten, he's going to get murked um, because when you try and get back to like an old weight you fought at ten years ago when you're older, your body's just different. Um, it's not as strong. I, I could I could go on a, a rant about every fighter who's done that and what happens to them, um, but they always lose. Um, so it changes as you get older. But I don't know. Just generally, like I know Kate, this is something you're always kind of interested. I think in, like, it's. Which, I just think it's yeah, interesting yeah. What, to like, see for what, you. What is it? So mine's, mine's kind of, yeah, yeah. Mine's always kind of stayed the same. It's like 132 to 135 is where I feel best. And it like, it's kind of just where that's maybe a little bit more of a range being around that weight, but, um, just trying not to like force if I'm 135 and I feel good there and feel like I can run well, running is always just like a good benchmark marker for me. Like if I can move well in a run and I feel strong enough to lift some weights, um, but I need to be light enough to do gymnastic moves. And that's, <laughs> yeah. that's the kicker. Like, yeah. You know that I think, it's you know, balance. a lot of women don't want to talk about like, if you're not doing chest bar pull ups so well, well, do you have five more pounds on you? Cause, or dips, I mean, dips when I'm five pounds heavier, it's, it's hard. Yeah. I just tell people, well, gymnastic, it's, it's that strength to weight ratio, you know, without really <laughs> yep. saying it, but yep. that's kind of what it is, right? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, like, I mean, that was a big thing. You know, for the open last year, I really wanted to be able to get a muscle up, and I did. But, um, you know, I, my my weight was just a few pounds heavier. It makes such a huge difference. I remember I was one thirty four that day, and I'm like, man, if now to get a muscle up, it'd be like one thirty, one thirty one. But that feels a little light to me, like to be able to lift heavy weights. And then I think what's interesting is like 
just a fluctuation you will allow yourself throughout the year. And I've really tried to tighten up the guardrails on mine a little bit where, um, but I like to fluctuate five to seven pounds, like at the top end, seven pounds, like, Hey, we're coming off a vacation. This is kind of like, but we need to go back down Mm -hmm. because that allows me to just have some fun. Yeah. I I remember to that point with the gymnastics, uh, kind of a legendary CrossFit coach, Doug Chapman, who, who, you know, myself and Dave are, are buddies with, um, he was having like a, a camp or something up at his place. And he's just like, he was like a heavyweight wrestler and he's, he's a, he's a big thick dude. And he was just like, just watching us do like muscle ups and, you know, dips and, and just like really easy pull ups. He's just like, you guys are just so damn light. And like, <laughs> you guys are so strong for how light you are. You know, it's like these guys are pulling, you know, 500 pound deadlifts and they're juggling bars that are like 200 and some pounds. And, you know, the dudes are like 170, you know, and they're just super strong guys sometimes cause they're shorter or they're just like, you know, I know myself at the time I wasn't like any kind of elite, you know, competitor, but I was pretty damn strong for being very light. How like much my, did you weigh then? I mean, I'd be like, then I would sit around like 170 and I could pull like a 475 pound deadlift. And like, I mean, I could just throw my body around. It was just like pull ups. And where are you at now? Like one eighty. One eighty. Not 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 a lot heavier. So like my my like fighting weight has gone up. I'm like, you know, in the early like low one eighties. Um, when I want to like compete in something now. When you literally fought last year, what you were one seventy seven. Seventy seven. I weighed in at. But the the only reason I would have gone lighter, a little bit lighter, maybe a pound or two lighter, um. The guy told me my opponent was uh, 179 two or three weeks before it. And he said, are you cool with that? When we weighed in, I'm like, yeah, that's fine. But then I was like, I'm going to eat a little bit more because I was like, I thought I was going to have to make, um, I think it was 176. It was 176. I was just like, okay, I can eat a little bit more. And then that dude... I don't think he was jumping on a scale. He he weighed in at 171 and was pissed. Mm. He, he had no idea where he was at. He just jumped on the scale. He's 171. He was really he lean. He might have just got stressed out. Yeah, he way. just he, did, he I think he just kept dropping. But they said like two or three weeks before he was like 179. And you and won't was, fluctuate much no, like no. comparatively. Like you'll fluctuate five pounds maybe. No. But like for me, yeah, I'm 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 pretty much I mean, anyone who's seen me around for a decade, like I don't typically look a lot different, like just from like a big and small, like I'm not getting bigger and smaller. Um, but yeah, like one, like when I'm on it, on it, and I want to compete in something, 175 is about as low as I want to go. But you, I usually compete a little bit better, lighter if I can maintain all my strength. Yeah, Anything lower than that, I get weaker. Anything over 185 pounds, I'm basically putting uh, a pound of uh, weight on the bar for every pound I'm gaining at that point. Yeah. It just it doesn't seem like it matters. <laughs> like that's about as big as I'm gonna get that affects my strength, you know, in, in any kind of reasonable way. Um, so 175 to 185 is about my my full range, and I won't get any stronger. It feels like over 185, and then once I go below 175, I can't keep my strength up. And I'm about as lean as I can get. And then after that, I just get frail. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say, I mean, I, I when I was competing, I was probably 210 to 215, which was kind of heavy at the time. I mean, it, it, I was, even at that weight, I mean, it was, I was pretty lean. Like, there wasn't, oh, like, yeah. you were a lot of, like, up. fat I could lose. Yep. So, I mean, it was, it was a pretty lean, heavy weight. But I just think that it was very, it got kind of difficult when I got off the ground for a lot of reps and stuff, like yep. I was a very good runner, you know, like, and, you know, despite the size, obviously, you know, pretty strong in a lot of things, but uh, some of the high rep gymnastics stuff would be tough, especially back in the day when there wasn't a lot of like kipping on certain things like that. And it was yep. like more strict. So just um, from across that same point, that was kind of tougher to do. Um, but uh, I don't know, maybe if I had dialed in nutrition more, it kind of had more of a plan on that area or was more focused on it or had more of a specific coach help me do that. I mean, maybe down to like closer to 200 would have worked out better, but again, I don't know. I, I think when I graduated high school, I was probably between 195 and 200 
by the time, like my last year of playing football in college, I was, and I'm only 5'11". So I got up to 230. Yep. And I was still pretty lean in college. Just everything on me that you see now is just thicker. Neck was thicker, legs were thicker. Yeah, everything yeah. Was just, like, you're younger, you're just eating, you're just playing a sport. You're not not worried about doing pull-ups in college. Yep. Like, yep. I'm not doing rope climbs and long-distance runs or things like that. You're just playing a sport. And I was a linebacker, so it needed to be that bigger. But when I would say within six months after our last game, I, w- I probably was down to like 210, 215. I lost a ton of weight pretty quick. Not even – Intentionally, it just fell right off me. It just kind of happened. It's probably a lot of work for you to stay at that weight. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think anything on a five eleven frame, like anything beyond two thirty, like I'm just not going to get around as well. Like I wouldn't sure. be able to like have the agility on the field to like do anything. There's there's kind of a limit of like how tall and thick you can be at a certain weight to like be an athlete. Some for, people have quite the opposite position. issue when they quit playing. They they eat. They eat like they're doing the activity, and then they're not training. But you, you were like, you're still into working out. Well, yeah, most, like even that, a yeah. lot of the guys who were like linemen on the team who were 300 plus. You know, a lot of them really leaned out over the next few years. It was nice to see a lot of men getting into CrossFit too because they were former athletes. Yeah. But I would say, you know, probably when I was competing late 20s, early 30s, like maybe 210, 215. Like right now, I'm usually about 200 to 205. If I really kind of I say to be disciplined or just sometimes I eat like an asshole or I'll eat too late or just like have too many beers or something like that. Like if I just kind of am a little bit smarter about kind of approaching stuff and not yeah. just cheating so much a little bit, I'll, I'll get down close to like 195. Yeah. But again, I'm very consistent in that I'm right around 200 for the last 20 years. To be honest. Yeah. 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 I was going to say you, you, you maintain a pretty, I've, yeah, I've just never done any, like, yeah, any yeah. kind of cutting or gain weight for anything. So yep. it just I've kind of fallen into this very, like, homeostasis position where my body generally feels good at. I think that's usually the way to go. It's the healthiest. Yeah. It really where is. You're not, like, yeah. you know, it's not fighting yourself. Bulk and, and cut, like, in massive ways. Like, of course, like, it's like, hey, I want to do, like, this event, and it's a little more strength-based. I'm going to try and gain maybe five pounds or – this is more endurance based, lose five pounds. But if you're kind of staying within uh, a range, that and some, range people, you, some yeah. people, depending on their frame, can vary a little bit more. Um, I just remember at yeah. the end of doing fitness, especially figure, you know, it's a little more extreme, just yeah. like my skin and my face. It, it's so hot. Like your skin's an organ. You forget that, like even the, the a little bit of the dehydration, the rehydration. I just remember feeling like, Shit, I think I just age like five years in like six months. It's like leather. <laughs> I mean, in the tanning and. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, hey guys, we do have to wrap this it, yeah. today, but for everyone listening, what I do want you guys to do, again, shoot some questions our way. So send them to Brandon at CrossFitGrandview.com, and and we'll put this in the uh, kind of in the link to the uh, the podcast. Send them to Brandon at. at at CrossFitGrandview.com. And what we'll do is we'll get to all these questions. If they pile up, we'll just throw them onto the next one. But we'll spend a few minutes on each one, and help, hopefully we can, as a group, help solve some problems or at least give you guys some some cool tips and, and, and have some fun with these questions. So please, like, don't hesitate. If you guys have anything, you're like, ooh, that would be fun to talk about, please send them our way, and then we'll, we'll get them right into that queue. We'll see you guys next time.